I am grateful to be here this morning, though obviously not under these circumstances. But here's what I know for sure. God is in no way surprised by where we are today and the circumstances we're facing. And I know that he has specifically planned for us to be in the book of Habakkuk. More than a few years ago, I was here at church and Pastor Danny was giving a sermon on vision. And he referenced a verse in the book of Habakkuk. And at the time I remember thinking, I don't even really know anything about that book, but that sounds like a book I would like to study. I made a mental note. And as typically happens when I only make a middle note and I don't write it down, I quickly forgot it. Fast forward a few months later, and my family was facing one of several devastating experiences that we would go through over the course of the next three years. I was grieving, I was angry, and like you, I had questions that I desperately wanted God to answer. During that season, I was in the habit of having my regular time with the Lord in a great big oversized red chair in my front room. And I grabbed a giant cup of coffee one morning, and I sat down and I said to the Lord, Lord, I'm done. But I know that I need to start again. I know that I need a fresh start with you. Where should I go in your word? And I heard the spirit within my heart whisper to me, go to Habakkuk. And I specifically remember thinking and saying out loud, Habakkuk, really? How about Psalms? How about Ephesians? Anything else, Lord? But quietly in my heart, he repeated, I want to meet you in Habakkuk. And you know, when the Lord repeats himself, you probably better pay attention. What I found there in the midst of my own personal wilderness was like a cup of cold water to my thirsty soul. My heart fell deeper in love with God. I grew to have this crazy affinity for a farmer turned prophet, turned writer, turned worship leader named Habakkuk, a guy who was a lot like you and me. I don't know where you are today, and I don't know what you brought into the room with you. I don't know what happened five minutes before you got in the car, what happened yesterday, last week, I, I don't know. Maybe you need a fresh start more than ever. Maybe you're grieving a loss, or you're angry, or you have questions you would have liked to have been answered yesterday. You know, Pastor David says that Habakkuk is the book to go to when we have questions. And I can't think of a better place for us to be than this book right now. So let's meet him briefly today so we can kind of get to know him. And we can look at some of the context of this particular book. Now, if you aren't familiar with where it is, you can grab your phone and you can pull up your Bible app and you can just type in the word Habakkuk and it will take you straight there. Technology is a wonderful thing. But if you have a copy of God's Word that looks like this, you're going to want to turn to the back end of the Old Testament. And Habakkuk sits between Nahum and Zephaniah. And here is the historical time frame, what was happening in his world when he wrote this letter. It was around the time of 640 to 609 BC, just after the reign of King Josiah. It was before the Babylonian invasion of Judah. Judah, or God's people, had radically turned from God when they were following evil kings. But briefly, during the reign of King Josiah, they returned to God and had a period of revival. But after he died, they quickly went back to their evil ways. So you might say, it was rather a politically turbulent time. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Assyria had ruled over God's people, but they were weakening. But a new threat, an even worse threat, even more evil if that's possible threat, a new world power was rising in the Babylonian Empire. So this book was actually written before God's people were carried off into exile by this new threat and this new world power. So 
if that's ringing some, it's cutting through, and you're like, yeah, maybe I, I remember that, here's a couple of people that were contemporaries of Habakkuk that might sound a little familiar. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, and Zephaniah, just to give you a little bit of context of who he was. In Habakkuk, the very first verse of Habakkuk chapter 1, this is how he introduces himself. He says, this is the oracle that Habakkuk, the prophet, saw. The oracle, that's just a fancy name for problem or vision or burden that he had. And the fact that he was a prophet, that just means that he was a truth teller for God. He told the people the truth or he told them what God said. Habakkuk, I find his name super interesting. His name actually means to wrestle. And throughout the book of Habakkuk, we're going to watch this wrestling prophet wrestle with the Almighty God because he had questions and he went to God in prayer. In fact, the book of Habakkuk is basically a prayer journal. Typically, prophets spoke to the people on behalf of God, but this time the prophet is speaking between himself and God. He goes straight to God with his questions. And what we can surmise is that Habakkuk is trying to reconcile what he knows about God, what he's done and who he is, with the reality of his own circumstances, the wickedness inside his nation and the wickedness without. You know, I think we've all been there before. We've all had those seasons of wrestling with the Lord. About a year after um, the Lord challenged me to meet him in Habakkuk, I found myself in one of those wrestling situations. My family had um, had a doctor's appointment with one of our girls, and we had gone to bed, and at about midnight that night, our pediatrician called and said, you need to rush your daughter to the hospital. We grabbed her, we went to the ER, we got her checked in, and for that first, the entire first night, we had no idea what was wrong with her. And I remember sitting in a very small room by myself with my girl, wrestling with the Lord. We were placed in the Pediatric Intensive Care Cancer Unit, if that gives you any idea of how hard I was wrestling. And I can tell you that the silence in a hospital room when you don't know the diagnosis is deafening. And I wrestled. And I had spent so much time in Habakkuk, I knew that I needed to be praying. And so all night long, while she slept, I prayed. I wanted to know why. I wanted to know how long. And I wanted to know what in the world God was going to do to fix my daughter. You know, he didn't really answer my questions initially. Diagnosis can take time. Doctors have to take tests, and they have to take their time to make an accurate call. But what I realized at the end of that very long night was that God was with us, that he was for us, and he had plans for us. And I also knew this, that he loved my daughter way more than I did. So we've seen in our lives this disconnect of trying to make sense of what's going on and what is happening around us. So how do we move towards a fresh start? How do we start over? And if God is God and he's good and he has plans and he's for us, why hasn't he answered our questions yet? You know, last week, Pastor David asked me in a meeting to summarize Habakkuk in one sentence. And if you know me and you know my love of words, I, my first response was, that's really hard to do. One sentence? Are you serious? But as soon as I said it, I knew exactly what my sentence would be. And this is what it is, even if I still will. It comes from a verse later on in the book of Habakkuk, which we're going to get to in a few weeks, but I'm going to read it for you today. It's Habakkuk 3, 17 through 19. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's, and he makes me tread on high places. Can I ask you a question this morning as you're sitting here and you're letting all this sink in? What is your even if? Maybe your even if is you're facing cancer. Maybe your even if is 
your marriage is on the rocks. Maybe you're even if, as you are a teacher and you're starting school and everything's crazy once again, and maybe you're even if is just quite frankly the situation that we're faced in our world today. Can I encourage you this morning? First of all, remember that even if the circumstances in your life aren't what you want, even if the narrative and the story that you're living in isn't one that you would choose, would you still trust in the Lord? Would you worship him today? And as Habakkuk teaches us, will you go to him in prayer?